Good morning. I bought some new axle stands because I've seen some decent bigger ones for tractor stuff and machine kit just to be a bit safer than what we're doing at the moment. These were not cheap. They're about 230, 40 quid for two of them, six ton. You buy proper ones. They're certified for a specific weight. These are six ton each. Fantastic. Safe as houses, aren't they? There's bad welding and then there's bad welding on a piece of kit that's meant to keep you safe that you're working under. A grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't. Well, not me, whoever welded this thing up. It's mental. I could make significantly better ones than these, substantially more beefy, but for the sake of insurance, we're meant to use these. Welded by Stevie Wonder. Flatbed off, malt, I need to deliver that later. I've got the final calf caught. Livestock trailer on, get the calf, clip it in the shed, done. Then go and deliver that malt. Third three bound. Smash it. Now just to get one calf in the trailer, should be easy. Yeah. Ideally I wouldn't have left one on its own because they don't deal well on their own but we'll soon get it with his pals. done i'm just going to set out the pens or well, the gates behind you a bit better so that what happened to the last one which potentially has broken a bone in here when it tried to jump over the gate back there won't happen this time right this should be plain sailing <laughs> That beast thought about it. It angled up these gates for a jump, but thankfully, didn't take the leap. Makes me a bit nervous. Especially because it's on its own. It's just, to, never like to have cattle on their own at all, ever. It's just circumstances meant it had to be on its own. If they've got a pal, they're just a lot more chilled out. Anyway, in the next 10 minutes, it's gonna be back with its pals for good. By the way, these clippers are fantastic. They're probably one of the cheapest sets of um, battery clippers I could find at the time. I bought them probably two, maybe three years ago now. I don't use them all the time, just for the calves. They come with two batteries. If I remember correctly, they were 200s at the time. I mean, I, I, we're not doing loads and loads of cattle. If you're doing loads and loads of cattle, you probably want a wired set, but very handy. Bomb proof, hasn't let me down. There's a tooth missing off the comb there. I need to get a new comb, but tooth's been missing a while. Anyone who's interested, they're razor. I don't know if they sell them anymore or whatever, I don't know. Probably straight out of Wuhan. Okay, change of plan. Dad is going to take that cattle base back to yard three, or away to yard three. Kev's just fin finished sowing here at yard one. We need to get him to yard four, where Dunk is grubbing. Need to move a forklift to yard four. I'm going to do that and then dad's going to pick me up. A bit of taxiing here, there and everywhere at the moment. And then I need to get that malt delivered. I'm kind of running late today. Fortlift secured. Just going to fill up this ring feeder before I head along the road to yard four, which is away that way about two miles. We just need this fortlift to lift seed into the drill for a couple of days. Cue Stevie Wonder, isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? Boy's been putting in the open ridge in the middle, right down the apex of the shed. It's effectively open for air. So that for cattle, they obviously give off heat and you don't want them to linger in that air because it's stuffy and you get pneumonia and all sorts of bugs and whatnot. You like good aeration. So along the ridge, it being open, the hot air can rise up and out the ridge and you get good air flow through the whole place. It kind of looks closed, but it's not. It's like a raised opening. Two, but each side goes up like that and up like that. The gap between the upright bits and the dome for the air to go up and down and out. I'll show you later. Off the yard four we go. The cows just 
what you need for the cows is you want a cool environment, you want a cold shed, don't want it to be warm at all. So you want a cold shed but you do not want a draft. You want airflow but not a draft. So any stuffy air, warm air coming off the cattle, coming off the bedding, you want it to be able to rise up and get out and keep moving and fresh air coming in all the time. Same as us, nice fresh air, can't beat it. Especially Scottish air. Yeah. Beauty. Dad is here to taxi me home. Seed is in this shed. There you go. LG Caravel. We've never grown this before. It's new seed to us. Kev's filling up and he's heading along the road to our four to start sowing. Jump in the van to fill it up with malt to get this beer going. New beauty. Fence looking well. No problems to report, which is always good. We'll be far off 2,000 hours now. Maybe not quite, maybe 17, 1800. Our stacking yesterday decided to go squint. Our shoddy stacking. The bags were quite shiny and slippy, so I didn't want to sit that well. So instead of taking it on the flatbed, we're going to get it in the back of the van there. Steady does it. Fingers crossed in a few weeks time that will be coming back to us in liquid form in the form of bandit beer It was going to fit because it's so lopsided The wheel arches jut out and over so Whoa, whoa, whoa It is flipping tight Keep coming Another half a foot and we're in Go that way a touch. Oh! But in, just skin of our teeth. As long as we get it out at the other end. Worst case, it's only 500 kilo. 25 kilo bags, so 20 bags. Let's go, St Andrews. French lawyer has just arrived for some wheat, so Dad's gonna load that. I'm gonna knit quickly, but not too quickly, to St Andrews. It is five to three. I was planning on being at St Andrews Brewing at nine o'clock this morning. They shut at four o'clock takes about an hour to get there. I'm in a van which isn't particularly quick and then you throw 500 kilos in the back, I'd slow down with 500 kilos on my back. What's your thoughts on the final label outcome? Don't give me too many critical thoughts because it is the final label design. Thank you to everyone for any inputs. So it's Goldburn malt barley that we have combined, harvested, dried, stored. It went to crisp maltsters to be malted. It's now off to St Andrews Brewing to make bandit beer. Minimum batch size is 2,500 litres, which equates to 7,000 bottles. I had to commit to that size of order, which is a fairly sizable commitment. We've made it, hopefully with our pallet still stacked with malt. St. Andrew's Brewing. It's out anyway. Malt dropped in. Spoken through the recipe with Mark, the brewer. I think we're there because uh, they changed brewer, so just wanted to make sure the recipe had been transferred over perfectly and it seems to have I'm a, I'm a wee bit kind of nervous about it all but we're getting there they've got a wee electric forklift as well handy wee machine everything i'm getting is going to be in bottles but there is potential in the future to do possibly big kegs but more likely they have these wee kegs i'll see if i can get a, a wee picture of them a wee video of them but wee kegs are five liter kegs perfect for having out in the field or something like that a few beers for all your pals i'll maybe try and do them in the future but for this batch all bottles Okay, here's the brewery. So next week they've said we're gonna get a batch of mine hopefully done. One of these tanks, so one of the tanks behind. Two and a half thousand litres. I'm a bit nervous. Seven thousand bottles. See how it goes. Sits in the tank for three weeks. Then it's sent away to the bottlers. It gets bottled, it gets labelled, it gets packaged, delivered to me, and there we are. Lager. Let me know on the five litre kegs. Would you buy a five litre keg? Right, we're off. Malt dropped off. That's me committed. I mean, I was committed two weeks ago. I paid half the bill. Quick stop at my nanny's for a, a tea cake. I had one inside and put one in my pocket. Yard three to load up some cattle now. One, two, three. That's the way to take these to the abattoir. Job done. As you can see, I've not been amazing with the horn paste. That one was bought in, it had horns. Off he goes. I'm going to jump back in this and go and do a wee bit of plowing. 
This is the pea ground I've just come to check. Duncan Kev are getting on absolutely fine. I'm going to drive down here and see the wet patch that we fixed with the digger. This is where we were in with the digger about a week ago, at least a week ago now. This was the patch that was soaking wet, so it's, it's definitely better. Um, it's dried up a fair bit. It's hard to know because it's been so wet, it would take long to dry out anyway. I'm pretty confident it's a lot better than what it would have been if we hadn't come in here with a digger. Sorry to fill this in and fix it, but the main priority was making sure the water wasn't getting to the rest of the field. Because we can throw it and we've only lost 2 metre by 10 metre wee bit, so we can deal with that as long as it's not a, a few acres. The bit I'm away to plough is for the tulips. Thankfully it's quite dark, so you can't really see what job I'm doing. Perfect. That's how we like it. Done. Cheers for watching. See you tomorrow. <laughs>